Yeah, it was the darn kids again. And by darn kids, I mean one kid in particular that has made millions of dollars collecting and selling malware. And by it was, I mean the folks that hacked Nvidia, Samsung, Vodafone, Ubisoft, EA, Microsoft, LG, and Okta. Those dastardly kids. The whole Lapsus storyline has been just crazy to follow. I've tried to cover it as best as I can on this channel with the Lapsus playlist. And for those of you that have been following along so far, for First off, thanks, I appreciate you. But really there's a whole lot more to talk about that we haven't even covered yet in any of these videos. And that's just cause the hits keep on coming. And at the same time, there's other news stories going on that we haven't even touched on on the channel just because this has captured my attention so much. Now, all of that being said, we might actually be looking at the end of this story with one person who is believed to be the mastermind of Lapsus being arrested. But we're gonna talk about the arrest. We're gonna talk about the person that's being accused right now. We're gonna talk about kind of their history leading up to Lapsus because even that's pretty wild. And then we're also gonna talk about how Lapsus has succeeded in hacking so many large organizations and really what we can take away from that. Now let's go back in time a little bit to whenever this site called Docsbin was a thing. I had no idea that this was a thing and it was pretty freaky that it exists, but I guess it's only freaky if you're doing bad things under a pseudonym. This was a website specifically to dox people and for people to collect information on previously doxed individuals. Enter a figure with the pseudonym White. White took over as the owner of Doxbin and basically that's whenever the maintenance and just general state of the website entered a period of decline. The Doxbin community really did not appreciate it and so they began harassing White until eventually White relinquished control. However, out of spite, White leaked all of the data of Doxbin including drafts and unpublished content that hadn't yet been made public. And they did it all via Telegram. Now, as you can imagine, this riled the community up and that sparked as Brian Krebs mentioned on his blog, Krebs on Security, as the most thorough doxing. I mean, they even had videos outside of this person's house, which is wild. Now, hold that thought because we're gonna come back to that here in just a moment. Now, as that was going on, White was also busy basically flipping zero days. They would buy zero days and then sell them at a profit. And after some time had passed, White had accumulated around $13 million in Bitcoin. That is just insane. And you're gonna be probably pretty mind blown if you're not already familiar with this story as soon as I drop a little detail about who White is. But while making a ton of money flipping malware, White was also involved in a group called the Recursion Team, which specialized in SIM swapping and swatting. And then ultimately that takes us to whenever White either founded or got involved with Lapsus and then kind of became the engineer behind a lot of their larger hacks, again, allegedly. And of course, after that, we all are aware of what happened. There was the EA hack, then Nvidia, which kind of sparked this crazy chain of attacks through to what we've recently been talking about as the Okta breach. And even that, we're still digesting what exactly happened there, whether it was a severe hack, how Okta may have mishandled the way that that investigation was supposed to go and the way that you know companies generally are supposed to react to breaches and things like that, needless to say if white really is the mastermind behind lapsus then we have a lot to learn so you remember that massive doxing of white that we talked about earlier as a result of that giant leak of the doxbin site well they included a tiny little detail that this was actually the mastermind of lapsus so that led police in the uk to arrest white along with six other individuals here's the kicker white appears to be a 16 year old now i'm going to take a step back here and acknowledge that at least that i've seen so far no formal charges have been levied. And for all we know, that little detail about how this 16 year old is a mastermind behind Lapsus, you know, it's it's conjecture until it's proven. So I'm gonna hold off on, on saying that this is definitely the mastermind of Lapsus, but there certainly are a lot of indicators pointing to this being the fact. I also wanna note that while this individual is in the UK, the rest of Lapsus appears to be in South America. So by no means will this end the current breaches and the aforementioned companies or prevent future breaches breaches by the name of Lapsus. For all we know, though this individual is probably not going to be involved with Lapsus in the future, the rest of Lapsus could continue or they could all just splinter off into their own groups and begin hacking in their own purposes. And finally, I do want to say that this person's a minor and they got doxxed. And also, yeah, no charges have been levied. So we're not going to really go into any more detail about who this individual is. For all we know, this person's about to spend 
a lot of time in the public spotlight as a result of all this stuff that's happened. So we're gonna hold our horses and learn some more. Now, how exactly did White, this individual, lead this group of what might be just a bunch of teenagers in Lapsus to attack and really successfully exploit some of the largest companies in the world? And you're probably gonna bang your head against the wall with this one. It's been mainly social engineering attacks. We've already talked about how they have actively recruited insider threats inside of these companies and paid a pretty significant amount of money for people to act as insider threats. But what they've also done, and this was acknowledged in a Microsoft blog, there's a link to that also in the description, that basically talks about how they would basically spam users multi-factor authentication until they were able to get access, basically exhausting the person. They'd also jump on calls with the help desk and reset user credentials. Those social engineering attacks are things that you can really prevent with training and vigilance. But if those things aren't actively being looked out for and folks aren't being trained up on these things, then yeah, I mean, any company, no matter what the size, no matter what the security budget, is certainly vulnerable. Lapsus has shown that despite how unsophisticated, really, of a threat group they are, they certainly are sophisticated in their ability to exploit organizations. And isn't that really the main goal for groups like this? I've seen a lot of people basically wave off the threat of Lapsus just because they did not conduct themselves like a group like Conti or a nation state. And we should really take a moment to remember that a group like Conti is famous because of how sophisticated they were. They treated themselves like a professional organization or a company. They had a research and development arm. They had their own HR. They, I mean, anything in a company Conti had, they had such great documentation. They had a leadership structure. I mean, seriously, they were very sophisticated and that is how they were so effective. Then you have nation states, which of course are gonna be a lot more effective by default because that is their job. So then you contrast that with a group like Lapsus, which appears to be just a bunch of teenagers. We've talked a little bit on this channel about how we've seen actually some of the internal wrangling coming out on their Telegram channel where they'll delete messages after posting them. They'll basically chastise one another in some of the messaging. It definitely looks like a group that's run by a bunch of kids. And yet at the same time, here they are blowing people's minds with how many organizations they're able to breach in such a short amount of time. So it really doesn't matter how sophisticated or professional a threat group is. It doesn't matter if it's a lone wolf, a collection of teenagers, a pseudo professional group of criminals like Conti, or even a nation state. Everything's a threat. And if we don't adequately prepare for all these threats equally, then we are equally vulnerable. And that's of course where things like training, where budgeting, where staffing, all of these things come in and it's a pain in the butt to have to learn all these lessons after breaches occurred and after the reputational damage has been incurred. Think about the reputational damage that a company like Okta or its third party security provider have already suffered as a result of this breach and how it, more and more information is coming out and a lot of it was pretty public facing anyway just because of the messaging and the pace of the messaging, how mishandled the investigation was and in some cases it wasn't even acknowledged. It's just not a good thing and it's and you'd rather not learn that as a result of a hack and so you know we, we just got to treat this stuff a bit more seriously. But if you want to treat this a bit more seriously there's a playlist right here with all the information about cybersecurity that you need to know and I'm not even kidding you it's all there. And then also if you want something a little bit more light and a little less related to security check out my new personal channel. There's not a lot there yet but I promise there's going to be a lot more in the future so check it out. It's going to be pretty different and I'm pretty excited for what I'm going to do there. And in either case hit that subscribe button because there's going to be a lot more posted on this channel as well including potentially more information about lapses. So with all that I'll see you all next time. Bye.